Friendly hello. Welcome to the first Allocator Governance Call taking place for the Filecoin Process Program, October 29th. Let's see what we have on deck. So four main points on this call, as well as whatever community or support session we could provide. First topic is making sure that you're well aware of the upcoming Phil Bangkok Summit, which will include an FDS, which will also include a Filecoin Plus afternoon. So making sure you have the times, locations, and content, and we'll keep you abreast as that goes forward. On the last call, we had proposal 180, which looked to just check in with allocators that had not used their data cap, had not made any distributions, and just make sure this was a good fit, that they were working to actively go forward. So we'll check in on that proposal and just see what we have new. The last two topics are refresh for existing allocators and applications for organizations that would like to join the program. So we'll go over the metrics with all the new data cap that just went out on Friday and Monday, make sure there's no blocks, and then also check in with those of you that have an application on file, what to expect next, any questions you have. The last part of the call is new allocator applications. I think we're up to around 30. They run between manual, market-based, and automation, making sure that all the information for those applicants is public, whether it's on GitHub, Slack, or this call, and answer any questions they might have as far as how to join the program. There's always time at the end. If there's anything on your radar or anything you want to dive into, floor is yours, community call. And as always, stick a hand up, write in chat, and we'll happy to get you whatever you need. All right, so with that, today is October 29th. Take a look at the upcoming schedule because it gets a little bit shifted because of FDS. So next week, the entire foundation, a lot of the PL, a lot of the nucleated teams, Fiddle, we're going to be in Bangkok for the event. So you'll see that the next call is taking place on 12 November, and then after that, 03 December. So a lot of the updates will happen async. If you have anything to add, let us know. And if you follow this calendar that's linked in the slide decks, that should automatically update for you. So nothing you have to take care of on your end. It'll automatically push that date out. Checking in on uh, metrics, two weeks over two weeks. So if you look at October 15th, we had around 395 petabytes that was used across 246 clients. Flash forward two weeks, we're up to 420 petabytes with 256 clients. So 35 petabytes dispersed to 10 clients from the 65 allocators that we have going on in the program. All right, hey, Bill Bangkok, who's getting excited? Who's gonna be there? I'm looking forward to that. So big, big event. It's not just the FDS taking place, lots of upcoming events from IPFS, DPIN, AI work. So if you were keen to come and you're coming for some sessions, I know for me, I'm always amazed at how much more is taking place. So trying to share as many links with you as possible. The link in this slide deck to the Luma page will just give you a top-down overview of everything taking place, whether it's one of the resorts or one of the sessions. Lots to see, lots to do. Please come say hi. Let us see what we can do to help. The Filecoin Plus is having a Phil Plus day or Phil Plus afternoon on November 7th, which is a Thursday. The talks take place at 1530 to 1800, and there's four sessions currently scheduled. The point of these sessions is to be more of like a soft overview for anybody who's new, but really the content hopes to drive down with interested parties, whether it's SPs, whether it's clients, whether it's you as the allocators, anybody that might be interested. And I think the macroeconomics of DC and pathway iteration talks are going to be fabulous. So what these will do is they'll talk a little bit about like, what is the incentive structure of Phil Plus now? And does that make sense going forward? So if it worked in the past, it's probably not going to always work. So how do we modify this to grow and scale? And then with the pathway iterations, as many of you are finding with manual, there's a lot of drawbacks. It takes a lot of your time to go through each application. Then we have a watchdog that looks at that. Then Galen looks at that. Then the root key holder looks at that. So, so much of that process is manual. So as we look forward to Phil Plus 2025, what's going to be in that to make that a little bit simpler? So love to have you. One of the program talks that I'll be helping with is highlighting some of the allocator pathways. So as allocators, you do a lot of work and it goes to show like as people join the program, why would they be interested in this? How does this help the ecosystem? So I know that I've been talking with a few of you, really looking forward to that. I'll get you the slides and 
love to have you in the room. Just show you off. <laughs> so it's going to be great. I'll pause and I'll check chat if anybody has any questions on the upcoming summits. Great time. We can get it at the end. All right. So that issue 180 for sunsetting allocators, here's the reason why we kicked that off. If you saw in this starting thread here for metrics, we have about 84 allocators that were approved and we're seeing activity from 65. So around roughly 20 or so allocators that we haven't heard from. So this proposal was kicked off just to essentially say, look, love to have you in the program, but it's kind of difficult to just carry you for a year if you're not going to be doing anything because we're going to list all of the allocator pathways for clients to find. And if we have old pathways that don't answer or don't allocate data cap, it's a bad client experience. So with that, we identified the allocators with no deal distribution. And there were 14 that we put in this issue to say, look, if you'd like to stay in the program, we need two things. If you're a manual pathway, start using it. If you're a market or automated pathway, tell us when it's going to be launched and show us that MVP. One of the criteria we have for new applications is they have to have that MVP. So for those that are already onboarded, we need to see this movement. Otherwise, we're going to have to just put you in the queue and you can come back when you're ready. So thank you to everybody who kind of wrote back. What you're looking at in this list is all of those organizations that we were waiting to hear from. They've answered back with either we had a technical issue that we unblocked. We started our automated pathways. We weren't sure how to like make those distributions. So very meaningful to get it set up. So no allocators were sunset in this. Everybody wrote back. Everybody has a plan. But the next time that we do this, kind of a check-in, probably January, February, I'll announce it before. But if there's no activity by that January timeframe, whether you're a manual, market, or automated, it's going to be a really difficult explanation to keep you. So just as a heads up for these organizations that are starting to make these distributions, thank you. Looking forward to it. And if you haven't yet, this is kind of like your last soft nudge before we take that data cap away and onboard somebody who's coming. In. So this was the timeline that we gave. Everybody has written back. There'll be no more pathways that are removed right now. And so everyone should be set. Looking forward to those. All right. Based off the folks on the call, I'm sure you're curious about data cap refresh. So if you had filed your application between four weeks and two weeks ago, those all went out, root key holder signed. I verified all these in Pulse and data cap stats today and yesterday. So you should be all set. You should see now your data cap landed on chain, good to go. If you're on this list or you're waiting that data cap in this fifth round and you haven't seen it, please DM me immediately. That means there's something drastically broken and I'll be happy to help. Updates on what's going on with those of you that have an application that's in progress. So there's one current that's going to get a watchdog review, and this will push you forward. So this is you, OpenGate. There are three that have had the watchdog or community review, and we're waiting for the allocator response. So the watchdog does a fabulous job of like taking the data and then boiling that down into a question. And so some of those questions need to be answered before it moves on to either Galen or the root key holder. So if you see one of those once the watchdog has left their comment, please come through, leave that, and it will speed it right along. And then there's 11 applications that have had a watchdog. The allocator has come back. Galen's looked at it, and now it's just finalizing in that review progress. So I've checked in with Galen. I've checked in with the root key holders. We should see this finalized this week. So if you were on this list, expect to see that top off come through this week before we head in to the FDS Summit next week. So one of the things that has come up a lot, and man, I see this as well, it's that refresh process is manual and it's painful. So I will tell you, if it's painful for you as allocators and organizations, I assure you it's painful for everybody. And so we've been really looking at how can we make this process essentially less painful as we work on it. So there's four things that I just wanted to keep you as a community updated that are taking place. And one is the work that Fiddle's doing. So the meta contracts, meta allocators, smart contracts, this is really going to fasten that audit process and having to wait for that refresh to come. So looking forward to this, Will Scott on the Fiddle team is going to be speaking at the FDS. Any updates that come from that talk, I'll be sure to bake into this slide deck and post in Slack for you so you can track. Really exciting stuff. Looking forward to that. Also, the root key holder. 
So right now we have, I think it's one root key holder. We're exploring ways to have more people. If you've had a diligence check and you've waited for that root key holder process, this is a pain point. As we have this decentralized system, we still rely on individuals. So adding a number of root key holders would hopefully mitigate that time where we reviewed everything and we're just waiting. And three is templates. Some of you might have seen the first template that came out, not that great. So we're going to iterate it and just keep making it better. I know that Marta from Fiddle has offered to kind of take a look. We're looking forward. She's great. And I'll see what we kind of have. But the goal of that template is rather than have to wait for the watchdog to leave comments and you answer it, if we can get all that information up front, hopefully it just comes down to check the box. Is it retrievable? Do you have the SPs that you said? Is there diligence? And is that data that we could look at? Yes. Great. Let's get that out as quickly as possible. And the last update is the foundation. Right now, it's just Galen and I. I run support and helping whatever issues you have get funneled to the right spot. Galen runs the governance on the program. But there's a short site in our staffing where we don't have somebody who's dedicated to helping ensure that these move forward. And so this has caused slowdowns, too. So the foundation will have help from an auditor. If you've been around the program for a while, you might remember Sonny is coming, who would look at these requests help move them along and make sure that there was never a delay on that side. So there was always progress going forward. So we should see that auditor come back probably around December or January rule. And we're hoping that between the four of these, we reduce it quite substantially. I think the average is still three and a half weeks. And I know that the goal that we're working towards is less than two. And ideally in a, in a great world, less than a day that you can run your business knowing that like, if you do these, the data caps flowing. So we hear you. This is in progress. Looking forward to having more updates as they come on board. So I'll pause and see if anybody here on the call has any questions on a data cap refresh, either open or one that kind of closed. Too simple. I don't recognize any names on the call that are open with applications. But if you are on this call and you've submitted an application, join as an allocator, love to hear from you. Either we can stick around one-on-one -on -one after the call, we could go through it. We had this slide last time. I kept it for two points and I changed the color just to highlight it. Number one is that when these new pathways are coming through from these organizations, what we're looking for is people with high standing reputation in the community that can serve as this like trusted source of truth. Or when they say this data cap is quality and it will be stored to these standards, we can verify that because they're in the program. When we get a lot of these applications from GitHubs with no previous posting, Slack, no communication, no website, no information, it makes it really hard to kind of move this application forward. So again, as a reminder, what we're looking for is that established community trust. So that theme is the comments that I've left on these 27 applications that have come through. How can you demonstrate as a new pathway that we could trust you? So the first one is these manual pathways that you see. So if your name's on this list, you would have got a comment from me in your GitHub application. And what we're looking for is if you say that you have access to clients and you can bring those clients to network and ensure that that data is stored effectively on the Filecoin network, demonstrate it. So if you have a client, we'll call them XYZ client, bring them to an existing allocator pathway. If you don't know who you'd like to work with, Fiddle runs an excellent enterprise pathway, highly communicative, really understand this, open to questions. I might have left their bookmark in it bring that client and then broker that. So you're answering questions in the bookkeeping, you're answering questions with the clients on how the process works, your fingerprints are all over it, and then we can check. So did that client store the data to the standards that you said they would, and did you bring them on board? If yes, then it makes it really easy to say that this person has standing, understands this, and can move forward. Without it, there's really no way to kind of see if you're going to be successful with that five petabytes of data cap because the downside to just onboarding everybody who applies is now we have risk of fraud, waste, and abuse with the data cap. And also it's a time to onboard, to audit, then to remove. So we're trying to be very diligent. We'd love to have you, but we're asking for you to take those steps as you go forward on that.
So again, highlight that data cap with real clients if you're a manual application. And that's the best way to move that application forward. Questions, need support, love to help with you. Either come to these calls, I'll hang out afterwards, shoot me a DM, we can walk through this. I've done this with a few. I think it's really helpful. So whatever we can do to help, but we're looking for demonstrated value. And again, we're prioritizing applications that have demonstrated that value. That's that RFA. So we, again, we have 65 manual allocators. It does not make sense to grow that to 3,065. It makes sense to have that at manual allocators be effective, highly communicative, and own the problem. So again, we're prioritizing market-based automated pathways or just rock stars who might have lots of access to data with their manual networks. So take a look. But what I've seen from this is that applications have come through and they'll list themselves as an RFA. But when we look at the application, it's just a manual application. So if you are an RFA and you're saying this, you should have a proof of concept. You should have a demo or an MVP. If you're building a market, what's the website? How do people get on it? If you're building this automated pathway, how does the on-chain, off-chain pricing work? How is this tracked? How is this automated? If you're building one of these pathways and all of this information says it'll be manual until the pathway is ready, then I encourage you to come back when the pathway is ready. If you're looking for some data cap for testing, there are a lot of viable options that we can get you a small amount for testing to go through it, but you shouldn't need the five petabytes and fully onboarded to the program to do that manual step. So I left that comment feedback in some of those that it applied to for the market and automated. And this would come down for automated if you see your names on this list. That's what we're looking for is how does this automated pathway work? Because everything described in the application is just a manual pathway under the guise of that. And same thing with market. It should say the website, how does the deal making work? How is this tracked? These are really key information that are just missing from some of these applications. So again, if you're on this list and you'd like to come on board, you still have questions, reach out. You'll have a few recommendations in that application. Happy to do whatever we can to help you. Once we get all those, it's not scored, but you can see this. This rubric right here is all public, and this lets you know how do you stand against other applications. So the link's right here in the slide deck, slide decks in chat Slack, but you can take a look. So if your bookkeeping repo says that we're gonna use like say third-party tooling, I see this a lot, using third-party tooling, please, Please be discreet. What, what is the tooling? Is it Toggle? Is it Synapse? Is it some other system? But if you're at the point where you're ready to go and get the data cap, you should say what the system is. It should be ready to go. And if not, then if you see on the scoring rubric, it results in lower and lower scores in that field to the point where it doesn't make sense to operate that pathway. So again, check out the rubric if you've applied. A lot of great information on how these fields are being looked. And again, questions can come through happy to get you. I'll pause and see if there's any questions on that or Slack here. All right, Lenny, I just saw your question on the data cap refresh. I tell you what, when we get to the end of the call, I'll pull that up while anybody's pulling and I can give you an update. Lenny, I think you've either been reapproved for the fifth round or you're in that bucket of six. So I'll check and I'll answer you in Slack or excuse me, chat as we go forward. Right. One of the things you're going to see if you haven't checked it out already is major updates to the fill.org site. Now under fill plus, you'll see two fields. One is for clients to help them better understand how to do this process and come on board, as well as organizations to onboard themselves. They're going to see an update to the allocator list. Right now, it's just a list format. We're working with the foundation UCLIC team to actually bring in a bio. So people that are coming to the Filecoin ecosystem can see all the information on your pathway, your organization, and hopefully try to strengthen those ties. So I think with FDS, this is probably gonna relaunch probably later in February, excuse me, November, just keeping you updated as this goes forward. So with that, I'll pause and I'll see if there's anything that's specific that you guys would like to dive into. All right, since no chats come in, Lendy Mai, so I've got your application right here, came in two weeks ago. I think my great job putting your, your links, your forms, your collaborations, and really kind of spelling this out where it went through. 
we could see the information that Watt Drog came through, how they kind of called out, like we had the one petabyte, but where did that Feather 5 come from? And then where was that distributed? So thank you for replying back. We did this yesterday. So this should be kind of fresh as it goes through, kind of explaining a little bit. I know that the next step is that Galen's going to look at this and kind of piece it all together, ask any kind of clarifying questions that he may have from that final diligence. So you'd be in this kind of category right here of your applications currently in progress. We should see an update here. So this will be finalized this week before FDS. So you should see that final movement. Thanks for checking in on that. Appreciate the comment yesterday. You should see something come back from Galen either today or tomorrow shortly. Well, I know some of you guys may or may not be in Bangkok. See, Ken, Ken, you're 50 50, or were you coming? Why didn't I haven't heard back from you and Hitty if you guys pulled the trigger on that? If so, I'm just asking for uh, some friendly hellos and hope to have you guys at the Phil Plus session. If so, just let me know they're in Slack or that thread that we have. I'll make one last call if there's anything anybody would like to see or talk. This is our time, your time. I've just been uh, tremendously busy with uh, with family, so I don't know if I'm going to make it to Bangkok. Wish you the best, bud. Hope to see you, but otherwise, completely understand. All right, everyone. Half time. Give it all back. If you need anything at all, you can reach us on Slack, the issues, or feel free to reach out. Y'all have a great one. Thanks, everyone. Friendly hellos, welcome back. This is the second iteration of the October 29th call taking place for Phil Plus. Let's take a look at what we have. Program has four updates than anything you'd like to uh, dive into that we could help with. First highlight is the Phil Dev Summit coming up week after next. Goodness, next week. That's really quick. And checking in on proposal 180. If this impacts anyone on the call, keeping the community updated and making sure that we're explaining why. The other two points are the data cap refresh. So anybody that runs a pathway has submitted. If you were in round five, that should have gone out. We'll check in. And anybody who's re, we'll check in on the sixth round if you have any questions. Also with new allocators. So if you're an organization and you turn in an application, we'll go over that, answer any questions you have, and take a look at some of the key themes we're seeing. As always, there's room at the end of the call for any discussions that you'd like to have and we'll kick right into it. Slides should be in chat. If there's anything you want to ask, feel free to shoot a hand up, ask in chat, and we'll go, go right through it. So with that, this call is taking place on October 29th. Next call is 12 November. And after that, we'll have two more in December. If you add this Google to your calendar, it should auto follow, so no need to worry about time zone tracking. They'll all follow off UTC. And metrics, so month over month, we had 10 new clients that received 35 petabytes from 65 active allocator pathways that are in network. So we're still seeing progress. We're still seeing it forward. A lot of work to do. So we're looking forward to that. Let's dive into what that work is. First, it's syncing up and aligning. So Phil Bangkok is kicking off here next week. The link here is in the thread. Lots of events. If you weren't tracking this already, it's going to be about two weeks of solid activity taking place in Bangkok. Love to have you. We'll have a message in chat. Feel free to join. The FDS track, the File Developer Summit, takes place in Bangkok. There will be a dedicated Phil Plus breakout session. So you can meet other SPs, other allocators, the Fiddle team, Galen, myself, a lot of the people that are working in this ecosystem. If you have thoughts, impact, there are four talks scheduled. They will highlight what is taking place right now in Phil Plus. Galen will lead that, the state of Phil Plus. I'll walk through a very brief intro with some of our allocators. What do their pathways look like? Where are they seeing success? What are we driving towards for them in next year? There's a very good session on macroeconomics. Do the incentives align? What can we do differently going forward? Is it 10x all the way or do we change that? And then pathway iteration. The RFA went out. How do we structure it? Lots of good talks, lots of good sessions. Love to have you. So if so, please let us know. We'll have it all set up. All right, allocator activity. There was an issue that was filed. It was 180. 
And essentially the reason why this issue was filed was to sunset inactive allocators. These are allocators that were onboarded, had made no transactions, and had no deal distributions. The point of this was, one, to limit the amount of data cap that was just sitting there unused and unspoken for, and two, as clients look in the program, it just looked bad to have so many allocators that we haven't heard from. And if they wanted to remain, making sure that this was still something that they were on the get involved with. So when that went out, there were 14 pathways that had no activity. They were contacted in Slack and GitHub on this call and pretty much just asked, hey, you passed the first election. Is this something we need to see progress? So what happened from that is we reached out, we heard back. Allocators were not sunset because there was a myriad of technical issues that we either fixed or addressed or training or just got it all set up. But essentially, everybody who was on Proposal 180 has reached out. They're good to go. They've either started their transactions or started pushing it forward. So no pathway sunset. This is the closeout of that issue. The only obligation that these folks are now held to is making sure that their deal distributions start as we go into Q4. I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions, anyone's impacted. No one was removed, so hopefully no one was impacted, but any questions, floor is yours. All right, too simple. Hey, data cap refresh. So if you're on this list, you should have seen your multi-sig refresh. I went through and checked everything in data cap stats. Looks like the root key holder has completed that transaction, and you should see these all closed out. So everybody from EFIL Plus to RF Phil and Steve Hash, all of you guys, you should have that data cap back on and good to go. Right now, there is one review that's currently waiting for a watchdog or community comment. So you should see that move forward here at OpenGate shortly in this week. There are three reviews, Alan from Greater Heat, Ehum, File Drive, where we're looking for some comments based off what the community or the watchdog left. So if you're checking this out, Please go look at that, provide any answers that they need. And then the other 11, we're waiting for the close out from Galen and the root key holders. So they review this, they kind of go back and forth, they kind of compare it. And once that signature will happen, I asked about timelines. I was told it will be taking place sometime this week before FDS kicks off. So again, if you're on this list right here, you should see your next refill come through it this week as a waiting for the root key holder. One of the things that we had flagged earlier, this came out in an issue from ND Labs, good, good issue. And it was, how do we get the time down on this? So now that we've seen these come through for a couple of cycles, what we're seeing is four things that will speed this up. Number one is Fiddle is working on a meta allocator and smart contracts. This is gonna greatly improve the auditing, the tooling, the tracking, and the sanity as it goes forward, hopefully help out a lot. Root key holders. So right now we just have the one taking a look at how do we expand that network base of root key holders to keep it secure, but also not have a roadblock if that person should be away or we're waiting. Three, you might have seen the first draft of templates. Made a first pass, could use some work. So we're working on how do we make this faster and faster. The goal of the template will be to collect everything we need up front. So that way there's no back and forth between watchdog, the allocator, the governance team, and the root key holder. Ideally, it's just the allocator submits it all, it's black and white, it moves forward. And four, foundations looking at how we can streamline our process to either bring on someone or reassess to have a full-time auditor. If you've been in the program, this would be the role that Sunny filled last year. We're essentially looking over the applications, looking over the clients, verifying everything. That way, all it is is just a verification versus this whole audit. So hopefully, make this all set. I'll pause and see if anybody on this list that's impacted has a question, wants me to pull anything up with due to research, or excuse me, refresh. Floor is yours. All right. Next is allocator applications. So essentially, we talked about this on the last couple of calls, but just to kind of keep this current, if anyone's on the line, this applies to you. Whatever we could do, please let me know. What we're seeing is that the point of having the allocators or previously the notaries is that they were a high trust individual that had been in the community and understood the program. That high trust individual would then review these requests for data cap, data set storage, and put their name on it. Like, I have vouched for it. This is quality. I believe in it. And I stake my reputation that this is high worth. 
what we're seeing is a lot of the new pathways that are applying to the allocator program don't fit that model. There's no GitHub history. We've never heard from them in Slack. They're not in the ecosystem. We can't find any record of who they are or why they might be. So one of the things we're looking at is providing this feedback to these individuals and trying to make sure that they understand that this should be ready to go. So if you are an automated or market, there is a pathway already existing. So let's dive into what this looks like. So the first one is the manual pathways. I think that right now we have over 55 current manual pathways that are all doing the exact same thing, reviewing this, using their reputation to kind of drive forward and like verify it's all set up. The names that you see on the right are coming back and saying, look, we can do that as well, and we will adhere to these standards. So this is great because if any of these individuals have clients that they want to onboard that data, it's a very effective business model to come on and do that. But in order to make this work, there has to be some level of trust and demonstration with these organizations. So what we're asking is that if you've applied as a manual pathway, you demonstrate your ability to onboard the data. So bring a client to another allocator pathway. If you don't know anyone, I'd recommend Fiddle. They have a well-documented pathway. It's very clear. They're highly communicative. So you could bring your client to Fiddle. They will onboard that client as you're communicating with Fiddle and the client, and it's all public. And you could show that that client met the retrieval standards. This is the way that if you don't have a reputation or a tooling and you'd want to kind of get involved, you can demonstrate, look, I am part of that high trust process and I will work with this. Because the alternative is when we onboard all of these individuals, this is nearly half a hundred petabytes of data cap that goes out in the first round. So making sure that there's blocks, rails, and guidelines on that that gets right the work way. So that's what we're looking for as far as manual. If you're in chat and you have any questions or want to dive in, this is great. Or in our Phil Plus Slack, we're in the issue. This is why with so many manual pathways, 55, there was a prioritization call that was announced in April, essentially saying requests for allocators, RFAs, should bring something new or beneficial to the network to be onboarded. It's a lot of work, takes a lot of tracking. If we're going to invest in that, what is the return for the program? So anybody who is submitted for a market-based or automated-based application at a very high level, I would say that most of them are just manual pathways. It's a manual pathway that just lists itself as market or automated. Now that's fine, but to get on board right now, since there are so many other manual pathways, it's not fine. So essentially, if you've submitted for a market or automated based pathway, you'll need to have an MVP. There needs to be either a website for the market that's functioning that can be tested or if it's automated pathway, it should have some type of setup where it's gonna be like live and launched and we can text the pricing. So it should have a proof of concept or a demo. If you're not ready and you're not to that point, then the application isn't, isn't ready to come on board. So if most of the steps in your market or most of the steps in your automated are manual, then that's a manual application. Once the tooling is set, we can get you on board and we can have that testing. But until then, that would just be in development. So this impacts, I think it was six organizations. I've got them listed here. But you should also provide a lot more information on how that tooling is going to run, how it works. Again, this should be a full-fledged product that's coming to receive this data cap layer of trust and then distribute. So if you have questions or if you want to dive into this, please, please flag it and we'll go through. This same thing holds true for everyone in the market. So these are the individuals that are impacted that we saw submit a market application. So again, you will see comments in your application from me, like, hey, check out the other recently onboarded data. A lot of these are just missing critical information. And mostly that critical information is like, what is the KYC? What is the monetization? How does this market function? And again, if it's just a manual review, then that's going to get put into the queue with manuals and not like a high priority to come on board. All of these, all applications, as a reminder, there's a weighting system that's looked at. 
This weighting system is called the rubric and every question will have like a small, medium and large or a one through five score. So if data fields are missing, if there's not a lot of info, this is what's looked at. If you notice in the middle of this slide, it's italicized. If you're specifying that you're building a market or an automated pathway, and the KYC is like third-party tooling, what you're essentially saying is that you haven't scoped that, tested it, used it. You should be able to say, hey, my name is Kevin. My third-party tooling is Toggle. Here's the API. Here's the integration. Here's how it works. And it's very clear, and it can be put to market. If it just says third-party software, well, that's not a whole lot to go on. So things like that are what should be spilled out in these applications. If you have any questions, again, happy to clarify or help as we go through. I'll pause and see if that impacted anybody or if anybody wanted to ask anything. Wonderful. All right. Hey, as far as proposals, this is light. Not a whole lot as we get all set up for FDS. You're going to see a big update come to the org website, the fill.org fill plus. You might not already, if you haven't seen it already, we now list all the allocators. We are working with our comms and UCSIC teams, and they're going to start building out profiles, profiles of all the allocators, the different networks, and kind of building out. And it's supposed to be a comm channel for you. So the work that you're doing is highly advertised and folks can connect. As far as community, we had an applicant who was going to be here. I think they didn't want to wait until November. So we kind of have an open forum. So if there's anything on your mind, the floor is yours. All right. Sometimes it just be like that. So we'll get out of here a little bit early. Again, those of you coming to FDS, looking forward to it. Should be a great time. Those of you not, we'll get you a happy souvenir and we'll come back with it. Everyone have a great night. Anything, I'll hit you up. All the best. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Kevin.